Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the second type of ratios that stakeholders use to gain a better understanding of what the publish accounts hold in terms of the financial position of a business. And these ratios are called liquidity ratios. Now, as I mentioned in our previous video, liquidity is simply the ability of a firm to pay its short-term debts. And that's obviously they would have gathered in terms of the current liabilities of a company. Remember, short term is your current. Debts are shown as liabilities in your state of financial position. So it shows how quickly you're able to cover the current liabilities of a business. Okay? Now, there are two types of ratios that we're going to look at today. First one of those is called your current ratio. And the second one is known as your asset test ratio. Okay, now both of these ratios are concerned with calculating the amount of liquidity that a company has and that is shown by a calculation of the working capital of the business. Okay? Working capital and liquidity are pretty much tied together as constant. So if you have too much working capital, for example, meaning you have a lot of money just lying around and not doing much, then you know that it could have been used for something more productive and more profitable. So this indicates a wastage of resource. Having too much money just sitting in your banks or in your drawers in cash doing nothing is wastefulness. Let's flip that situation. Let's say if there's a situation where there's too little working capital. Then that means that if suddenly a payment has to be made and you don't have enough liquid assets, then the company might be unable to cover its short term debts, may have to take loans, bank overdraft, and that's going to cost extra for the business. So. It's a good idea to keep a close eye on the liquidity situation of a company and a company does that by having a good look at its current ratio and the asset test ratio. So let's look at these individually one by one starting with our current ratio. The formula for my current ratio is simply current assets divided by current liabilities. Okay? Now hopefully you will remember that both of these pieces of information current assets as well as current liabilities appear in the statement of financial position. So that's what we're going to have to look at if we have to gain an understanding of the liquidity situation of the business. Now, what does current ratio help us figure out? It simply helps us to measure the ability of a company to pay its debt. Okay, it may have to pay a month later, a week later, whenever they have to pay, the company will calculate its current ratio to figure out if they even have the ability to cover these debts or these liabilities that they had brought upon themselves. Now, whatever the answer to these current ratios are, and we'll, we'll do a practice question or two soon, but whatever the answer is, it's always presented as a ratio. So if the answer is four, it's four is to one. If it's answer is two, it's two is to one. So there's always a ratio, and the second part of the ratio should be simplified to the number one. And finally, current ratio, whenever you calculate it, a company is always looking to fall within a range of 1.5 to 2. Okay? A ratio of 1.5 and 2 is to 1, so anything between that would be considered a good current ratio to have. That means you don't have too much of your illiquid assets, you don't have too much inventory, you don't have too much liquidity either. If money is being used, put being put to good use, and that's what you want as a company, no wastefulness. So if your ratio is between 1.5 is to 1 to 2 is to 1, then you're doing a good job of maintaining your liquidity. Now there's another liquidity ratio which is considered to be a better reflection or a truer reflection of the liquidity of the company. And that ratio is known as as the test ratio. There's another name for this, it's called the quick ratio. And the only difference between current ratio and the asset test ratio is that when it comes to calculating the asset test ratio, the company deducts the amount of inventory from the current assets. The rest remains exactly the same. So current assets are your total current assets, whatever they are. You deduct the inventory, which is also part of this current assets calculation. And then you divide this by your 
current liabilities. Now, you will remember when you're discussing liquidity earlier, the reason why we're deducting inventory from this, from this formula is because inventory is an illiquid asset. It may still be in its raw material form, and by the time you finish it, you sell it, and by the time the money comes in, a lot of time may have passed, and you may have needed the money a little bit sooner than that. So inventory, because of its illiquid nature, businesses remove that from the formula to get a truer reflection of what the liquidity is currently. Okay, so most of it is the same except for inventory. It measures the ability to pay debt, same as current ratio, but this one tells you if they have the ability to do it immediately or not. That's the keyword. You remove the inventory to see what do you have right now in your pocket, in your drawers, in your bank to pay for the cost that you have incurred. Okay, and when it comes to an asset test ratio, a ratio of one is to one is considered normal. Okay, so if you have one in uh, dollar of current assets to pay for one dollar of current liability, that is all right because you still have your inventory, which is obviously removed from this formula. And finally, if you have below than one, if you fall below the ideal ratio, that means you have too much liquid, too much inventory. Okay, that's not a good situation because inventory is not easy to sell and convert into cash. If it's above one, that means you have a lot of cash just sitting in your business, not making you any money. You should put your money to use, your cash to good use, invest, give bonuses, motivate, whatever you need to do, but just should not be sitting in the business doing nothing. So you should be looking to maintain an asset test ratio one is to one and a current ratio of 1.5 to 2 is to 1. All right, so let's look at an example of a stable financial position and try to calculate these two ratios that we've just learned, starting with my current ratio, which formula was current assets upon my current liabilities. So all I've just got to do is now spot these two pieces of information from my stable financial position, equate them and find the answer. Now, when I look for my current assets, I can see them on the left side of my stable financial position. Here they are, which amount up to a total of 7,700. So I'll plug that in right here in my formula. My current ratio for this company is has a current asset of 7,700 divided by my current liabilities, I can see are given here, 1,300 and 100, which adds up to 2,300. So I should put that in the denominator right there. And when I solve for this, it gives me a number of 3.34. You'll remember that we always express it as a ratio. So my current ratio for this company right now currently is 3.34 is to 1. Okay. Now, from everything that we've just seen on the previous slide, we know that this is not ideal. Okay. In fact, it's too high. We saw in our uh, discussion on this topic that the ideal ratio should be around 1.5 to 2 is to 1. They have a 3.34 is to 1. What this simply means is they have too much sitting in their current assets, maybe too much cash. Look at inventory, 3400 inventory, which is already a pretty illiquid asset. So they need to manage these current assets better, maybe reduce the amount of inventory they're holding, that way they can reduce the storage cost and they can also free up some cash from this. Maybe get some of the trade receivers to pay up earlier, give them a discount, incentivize them so that you reduce your receivables. Or you can, Obviously, adding more liability is one way to do it. Maybe taking more board off, but then you have to pay that back as well. So just trying to find ways to balance this out so that you can be closer to the ideal level of 1.5, 2 is to 1. However, if you just have to calculate it, plug in these numbers the way we did, and find out the answer, which is 3.34 in this example of current ratio.
Now, the second of these liquidity ratios was your asset test ratio. And there are three parts to the ratio, right? First, you got to spot your total current assets, which we will see in a minute. But you must deduct the inventory amount from it. And it's divided by my current liabilities. Now, look at the, let's look at the numerator first. Okay? Now, there's two ways to do this. Either I calculate my total current assets, which is given here as 7,700, and then deduct inventory from it. Or when I'm calculating the current, total current assets, I remove inventory from it from the beginning. But let's just do what the formula has asked us to do. So my ATR equals my total current assets are 7,700. I reduce the amount of inventory from it, so minus 3,400, divided by my total current liability are 2,300. And when I solve for this, this gives me a total of 1.86 is to one. Again, indicating to us that they are way above the recommended ideal ratio, which was one is to one. So once again, this is not ideal. And if you have more than one, that means you have too much in liquid assets, which are not doing any favors for the business. And that's how you calculate your asset test ratio. And that completes the liquidity ratios for published accounts.